Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, so I'm just coming on to do a Slow Down Sunday video. Um, basically, I want to start getting prepped again for the altered book. And um, it's been a long time coming. I appreciate, you know, we're almost in the summer months and I've not done spring yet. Um, really, I've just not been feeling the inspiration for it. Um, the reason for well, this I think the reason is is multi, there's multifaceted to be honest. Um, one of the reasons was we had a very very wet spring here in the UK. All of March and all of April were just total washouts. And yes, I know, I know, I know, rain does come along in the spring, absolutely. But it was a lot more rain than what we normally have, and I just was not finding it inspiring to do the spring pages when that kind of stuff was going on so I thought to myself I'm just gonna hold off and then May was a really busy month so it just did not fit into it so that's why <laughs> um that's where I've been with it um so I'm so sorry for those who who were following along and watching the videos and everything um please don't think that I forgot about it I didn't um it was on my mind a lot but I just wasn't feeling the inspiration so I am now but the first thing that I want to do is similar to how we did the winter pages when I was doing my um, December daily vlogs. I thought it might be nice for us to sit down on this slow down Sunday with my cup of tea. <laughs> and um, I want to have a look at what the pages might look like and just start gathering my thoughts as to what I'm after. And I also want to have a think about what kind of nature and wildlife and everything we see in the spring months. So I'm going to use Edith Holden to help me do that. Obviously I have some ideas myself, but I also want to have just a, a little think uh, with her help as well. Okay, so spring for me is going to be at the beginning of the book. So um, this I'm keeping as is because I'm going to have just like, um, you know, decorative end papers there. And then this is the first page that I've got where I've got a pocket. But I want this to be almost like um, an introduction to the book. Um, so this is where you would like maybe tuck notes for your year ahead or, or something. So my spring pages actually start here. And for those of you who might be new to my channel, um, this is a project that has been off and on my channel for, um, well, since autumn. Um, so I do have a playlist um, because we've already done the uh, autumn months and we've also done the winter months. So we're on to spring now. Okay, so this is where we're starting. So I know that the first page, so what I've got to the right of me, I don't know if you can see this, I've just got um, a piece of paper here and I've made some notes about what kind of pages I would like to have in the journal. And I'm just gonna make notes as to um, where they're going to go. So what page fits best with the idea that I've got. So I know that my first week of spring, so this double page, is just going to be a simple overview page for the season. So similar how we did here with the autumn, I'm introducing autumn there, and this is the first winter page. So autumn in the woods, winter in the woods, so it would be, you know, spring notes, spring, something to do with spring anyway. So that's, I know already know that's gonna be my week one, so um, that's all that is. It's just simply writing spots with um, some fussy cuts on it no pockets or anything. Okay, so the ideas I have for pages, I've got, I want to do a fabric flip. So I've also got my fabrics next to me. So we might have a look through what kind of fabrics would be, you know, nice colours for the spring months. Um, and that's really just to bring in an element of texture to the journal, because I realised that I've done a lot to do with, you know, paper and fussy cuts and everything to do with that, which is absolutely fine. I've added a little bit of crochet here, but and obviously I've added the window pages, but in terms of textures, I haven't added as much as I would normally in a journal. So I think it might be nice to have a fabric flip, but I also have want to have a think about what would that reveal? What would it be? Would it be a writing spot? Would it be a tuck spot? Would it be, you know, a secret pocket or something? I'm not sure. I also want to get a belly band in here um, because I've not done one yet. And I've actually got this in my stash, um, which has got daisies on it, so perfect for spring. 
Um, so I'm wondering whether I could fit this in somewhere. So I'm just going to have a little rifle through the pages. And belly bands can fit anywhere. Um, I'm thinking I might have it here because when I was originally uh, uh, preparing my book for the uh, pages, I added this top loader pocket, but then I decided I don't ever want to have a top loading pocket because it's just too tight a fit for any decent sized card. So I need to cover that up anyway. So perhaps I could use this. And this is one of these belly bands that I've made where it's a pull out writing spot. Which will be kind of cool to have in this journal because, you know, there's there's not as much writing space as a usual journal. So I think that might be nice there. Um, size wise, I think it fits nicely as a belly band. There's still room behind the page to have something tucked behind it. Maybe just even just some writing paper might be nice and then nothing's detracting from that. And also it's keeping it nice and flat. So what week is that then? So we've got a belly band. So we've got week one, week two, three and four. So the belly band is going to be week four. <clears throat> and on the side here, I'm just going to have writing space. So I think that might be nice. And that's the sort of colours I want for the spring months. Um, quite fresh looking, I suppose. So whites and greens, pale yellows, creams, maybe a bit of pale pink and pale blue and pale purple but on the I suppose on the pastel side so I'm going to write that down as well to because this will inform my um, paper choices as well because I'm very at the early stages of actually planning the the spring pages just having a cup of sip of my tea um so I hope this is this you know this will be interesting to some of you I'm sure where we're just figuring things out okay another page idea I want to have is two I want to cut one of the pages in half so that we have like a swing element I've not done that yet and I've seen other people do that in altered books and it looks kind of cool so I need to find a page that would suit that I'm wondering about this one because I don't know if I, I don't think I want to do a double side pocket again because I've already done that a couple of times in the other seasons. So that would be a contender. We've already got the belly band there. Or this one because I don't I don't think I want to do these triangular pockets again because I wasn't I wasn't a fan of them in the autumn months. If anyone saw my video, <laughs> um, they turned out fine, but I wasn't a fan of actually actually doing them. Um, or maybe this would be best as my window page because I want to have a window page in every season because I'm going to have to cover this whole entire piece here where we've got the the illustration. So I might have that as the window. So. Yeah, maybe. I think that might be good as the two pockets. Thing. Although it will eat in, that's what another thing I need to bear in mind. If I do, oh right, yes, that's right. Sorry, I had, <laughs> I had the wrong page in front of me. This one, and then we would have so what would I have next to the those pockets? Would I have a writing space or would I have another pocket? I think I would probably have a a very simple writing spot. Um, which would be here. I 
I also need to think about what's going to be on the other side of it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sorry, I'm just thinking. <laughs> um, as I say, this is this is purely a planning video, so I know it will only be interesting to <laughs> to some of you. Um, I I think I want to go with this one because I'm going to have to cover that whole illustration, and I'm thinking that can be my my writing spot. Yeah, I think we'll do that. So what week is that? <clears throat> so we've got week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. Okay, so that's going to be that one. Okay. <clears throat> so this is going to be the, the swing pocket idea. So I'm just going to take this corner bit out. <clears throat> to remind me that that's what I'm doing. So for that, we will cut the page in half and then this will be a pocket and this will be a pocket and then they they, they flip and flap differently. I think that's going to be really fun to, to just give it a go because I'm in this book, I'm trying to try different page ideas throughout the seasons just to try different things in here and just to really give the altered book a good go. So... That's that. So I would cover this whole image then as just a writing spot. This would be the pocket page. And then I would have something simple here. So I have to think about the fact that the two pages are going to, if you flip the top page over, you're gonna see something here with the pocket. So I'm just trying to think, what would you see with it? Would you see could that be nice for the fabric flip? I think so. So we're going to want to have the fabric flip here, which is the last page. So the fabric flip is going to be week uh, six. And I still need to think about what is that going to reveal underneath it. <clears throat> okay, so I still want to get in a window page, which is um, like we've done in the other seasons we had this kind of a thing where it's a cutout and you see a book image or a, an image. So I still want to do one of those because I want one of those in every season. So I have to find room for that. And I also want to do a page like this one where we've got the torn paper. I've done that in every season as well, I believe. Um, yeah, here as well. So I want to do that because th these types of things where that for me is like a bit of a continuation through the book so I definitely want to fit those two in so before I go any further I want to find where they, those are going to go so we've got weeks two and three available so this is week two which would be good as the that could be the torn paper and then we've got week three available which is here for the window page yeah I think we're going to go with week three is going to be the window page and week two is going to be the torn paper page. So I'm just looking at my list of anything else that I wanted to have in this season. So that's my pages worked out. So I'll just, I'll, I'll review them in a second. I wanted to have a vellum pocket. I definitely want to have that in the spring months and I'll explain why in a second, just having a, a sip of my tea. So, the vellum pocket, the way that I'm imagining it, is having vellum stitched onto paper, like some kind of decorative paper behind it, so that you've got the pocket, but the vellum is like clouding over that um, that image or that, that paper to tone it down. And I want it to be fresh, and I'm thinking the vellum will bring in some of the, the white, fresh tones. Um, and I did a project recently for Roxy's Weekly Challenge where we used... Um, vellum on top of green botanical book pages 
it looked really fresh and to me felt like spring. So I would like to definitely do that. I just got to think about where that might fit. And I also wrote down flip down file folder journal spots. So they would be little file folders out of scrapbooking paper and they would like flip down, be pockets themselves and flip down for a writing spot. So could I have those? I could have the file folders on top of the pocket, the pages that swing out. The ones where we were going to, so uh, week five, I think is this one. We were going to have the, the two pockets, so this be completely separate from this. What if instead of a side pocket using the book page, what if we actually had those as the flip down little file folders and then the file folders could swing out? That could be kind of fun, couldn't it? Alternatively, those swing pockets could also just be collaged. But I do like the idea of having the file folder. So maybe one of the pockets could be collaged and the other one have the file folder pocket. It's almost like what you see on this pocket, so say it's a daisy, whatever it is, that you, you've spotted the daisy in the wild and you've written your specimen notes about it, you've then got the file folder pocket to, put, to tuck your notes in about what you've seen up there. That's kind of the way I'm seeing it, so I will put that in as week, week five. I'm thinking that's where it would fit as like a really cute thing to do. This is also why I'm doing this on video as well, is it's helpful to me to record my thoughts because this, these types of ideas I have all of the time and I'll say them out loud to myself, I don't write them down and then I forget what it was that I was doing. But at least having it on video, if I ever get stuck I can just um, go back on my video, can't I? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> right, and then we've got the vellum pocket which I do still want to do. So. I'm just trying to think where that could fit. It could fit with like the fabric flip could flip up to have the vellum pocket underneath. That could be fun. Um, and really I think that's the only place it's going to fit. So the fabric flip was our last page which is uh, this one. So I'm just imagining what would the what what would the vellum pocket look like? Would it be a pocket just down the bottom? Would it be the whole page? Oh, that could be fun. So if you imagine a fabric flip, you flip that up to reveal vellum on top of a decorative paper, book page or a digital. And then within that you have some kind of pocket. I think that could be kind of fun. So I'm going to write that down as a note to um, consider that when I come to do it. And that solves the question of what is the fabric flip going to reveal? Because I always like my fabric flips to reveal something. You know, it could be as simple as it's just a fussy cut or a note or a writing spot or, or a pocket doesn't have to be anything fancy but it's just that the fabric flip is the thing that reveals um, the thing behind it. Okay so right here's what we've got to review then. <clears throat> Week one is going to be the overview page so our introduction to spring. No pockets just writing spots and some um, fussy cuts. Week two is going to be the torn book page and I need to have a think about what kind of pocket we would have on that torn book page. So um, <clears throat> as an example on this one, we've got the side pocket, which I did like. And in winter, oh, we did the same thing. 
So maybe we should have the torn page on the right hand side if we can. Depends where the window page is going to go because that's going to be the bit that's behind it. Because window page is week three. Which is going to be here. <clears throat> okay, so if I undo this. Okay, this is going to be a pocket instead. Actually, I need to fold it the fold it the other way. Oh, lost my crease. There we go. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> like I said, the early stages of planning, so I appreciate my thoughts probably aren't exactly coherent. <laughs> okay, so week one, overview page, no pockets. Week two is going to be the torn paper and our side pocket. Perfect. Week three is our window page, which I'm going to have on this side because it has to be. <clears throat> so that is no longer a pocket. That's like that. And <clears throat> so that's going to be my window. And on this side will be writing space and maybe a little tuck spot or something so that's fine week four is our belly band and we've already got that made so that's going to go there and then this is going to be a writing spot yep uh, week five is the swing pockets which is going to be cut from this side here and then this is going to be completely covered as a writing spot and then week six, this one is going to be our fabric flip and that's going to reveal the vellum pocket. <clears throat> and then obviously we're going to have the file folder, uh, the file folder flip down writing spot thing that's going to be made from the uh, swing pockets that we're going to have. OK, so that is the pages figured out as to what I'm going to have. That for me is always the first step with the altered book. I'm taking it a season at a time, as, as many of you all know. So I basically sit down and I have, a, I have a long list of pages that I think would be cool in the altered book. Things I've seen, things I think of, um, whatever. Um, and I, each season, I then sit down and say, right, which pages have I not done yet? Which ones is a running theme throughout the book for me? So for me, that's the torn paper pocket and the... Um, window pages <clears throat> and then I build up around there and then I just simply sit down and think what would make sense for the pages that I've got and uh, you know I go a page at a time kind of thing so that's that first step so I'm happy with that I've got the pages figured out so the next thing that I want to do and this is going to help me when it comes to choosing my papers and colours is what wildlife flowers nature etc do I see in the spring here in the UK and for me that's in southern England because um, <laughs> I am um, obviously Scotland for example would have very different spring animals and nature and stuff but I'm thinking about southern England for myself because that is what I see right so we definitely have daisies and daffodils I think that's probably why I was leaning towards definitely using whites and yellows, <clears throat> at least pastel ones, because of those. Tulips. Butterflies. And as I'm doing this, if you're thinking of anything, please, please comment and, and let me know. I know a lot of you are based um, outside of the UK, but that's OK. Um, it's actually nice for me to know what people see um i can see that the uh the sun is coming in so i'm going to try my shade block that i've been doing <clears throat> not a long-term solution but just a it will do for now so i'm hoping at least then you'll be able to see what i'm initially doing so if i just there 
I think it helps a bit, even if you still get a little bit there, but <clears throat> um, in the summer months I'll have to, well, I know we're nearly in summer, but soon I'll have to start filming in the the, the mornings only because um, obviously the, the sun comes around the house for the afternoon. I'm trying to think of what animals, so obviously if you've got butterflies, the bees, the bees start coming out for us in sort of like May, May we definitely see bees and then definitely through to the summer. I'm just trying to think what other animals we see or associate with, with spring. What did I say? Edith Holden was going to help me. So this will also be nice for those of you who enjoy a bit of Edith Holden. <laughs> who doesn't? So uh, spring for us here in the UK starts on the 31st of March. <clears throat> so I just want to have a little bit of a look through Miss Edith Holden here and just sort of see what she's um and also it helps from the colours what colours did she she pick out so you can see here we've got the yellows and greens hopefully you can see yeah so I think this will be the start of spring for her. <clears throat> so she's pointed out the daffodils. Periwinkle. So this will be the nice blues and purples coming through. Catkins. Oh yes, we definitely see catkins. So I'm just going to write that down. Catkins is early, early spring. So that is good to know. And then she starts talking about the birds, which I think is a definite. Um, spring here in the UK for a lot of birds is when they start um, nesting, flying the nest. So I'm thinking blue tits. Um, uh, when in my old house, we actually had um, a nesting box and a a family of blue tits actually nested in our box can you believe it um we could we saw the two blue tits so the mummy and the daddy um flying from our bird feeder to the nesting box frequently then it happened more and more regularly like you know in out in out in out like this about easily a dozen times in the space of say half an hour and we were thinking that's that's unusual you know, didn't think didn't think anything of it. We'd never had birds nested uh, with us before, and then we were sat in the garden one one eve uh, one evening, and we just heard tweet 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 lots of tweeting, and we thought no, and we put two and two together and realised we had blue tits, <laughs> blue tit babies in our nesting box, and um, I'll never forget that. We never saw them fly the nest, um, unfortunately. Oh, how I wish we'd had a camera in that bird box. Um, we never saw them leave the nest. It's just one day the tweeting had stopped and the blue tits, um, the mummy and daddy had, um, you know, weren't weren't doing their frequent uh, <laughs> food runs, as it were. So for me, that's a big one to to feel that that is a really good time of year here where, yeah, birds definitely nest and um, and stuff. And I suppose this is what Edith Holden is, is saying here about the, the, the birds egg birds eggs eggs of birds which begin nesting in march so we've got house sparrow and the starling wren rook blackbird robin song thrush missile thrush and hedge sparrow so yeah i'm gonna write that down birds nesting <clears throat> eggs <laughs> um because some definitely something i can i can do with that Right, moving on, because we're only in March. <laughs> um, primrose, that's another one. I also associate yellow with that as well. Yeah, we've got daisies, ladies, smock, and birds again. I may even use Edith Holden in the journal, um, little pieces of it maybe, maybe some fussy cuts from her. Cowslip, yeah, that's yellow as well, isn't it? <clears throat> dog violet and primrose yep got those butterflies yep 
Blossom, Blossom. How could I forget Blossom? Oh my goodness, Blossom's my favourite. <laughs> Exclamation marks on that one. How could I possibly have forgotten Blossom? Yes, a thousand percent. Definitely have to have Blossom in the spring months. Oh goodness. Magnolia. Apple Blossom, Cherry Blossom, Magnolia, Hawthorn, all of them um, for us. So yeah, we've got swallows and birds. She's got wild strawberry there. I would have associated strawberries with summer, but maybe um, maybe it's the initial flowering of them and then the fruit comes later. Maybe that's what she's referring to. Butterflies again. Various things here, but for me these don't um, these don't quite go with what I'm on about, and definitely not the snakes. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure, yes, we do have snakes here, but um, I have not seen one in the wild, thank goodness, and I hope to never see one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> pear blossom, yeah, lady smock, yeah, I've got all those, that's fine. We've got the, the bird's nests again, so that's a chaffinch. Hawthorn blossom, wild hyacinths. Hyacinths is a good one, we actually have those growing in our garden every every spring. So yeah, hyacinths. For me, those are purple. I don't know if you get hyacinths in other colours, but for me, it's purple. What you know, what I associate. Campion. Those are hyacinths again. Bluebells. How could we forget bluebells? Seeing the hyacinths made me think of those. So yeah, definitely want to get some bluebells in. <clears throat> Now garlic's a good one, we get that a lot here, um, if you're walking through the woods you'll get just an overwhelming smell of garlic, they love the woods, they love the shaded and the damp and they get um, these beautiful white flowers is what garlic is um, and I think it's, it's either five or six petals and they're sort of almost like a star shape. And that's also why I'm thinking white and green with the yellows and stuff, because I'm thinking of that as well. So very fresh colours, I think, is what I'm after. So we've got Blossom again. Yep, that's all fine. Yes, we need to have Buttercups. Those are yellow as well. I wonder if... I know all um, climates are different and countries are different. Um, for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, because I know obviously Southern Hemisphere you'll have completely different seasons, but, um, you know, like in America, do you do you get buttercups? Do you get daisies? <laughs> that might sound like a really silly question to ask, but I'm genuinely interested because I have no idea whether you do. And then for me, June, obviously June, summer starts on the 21st, so I'm not going to go any further because I don't want to get myself confused with... Um, like some of these is technically spring, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's that one. Um, and then I am going to look in her nature notes just in case there's anything I'm missing. But I might have already gone into this page, uh, this book quite a bit. So again, we've got the nesting birds and the daffodils. <clears throat> that's all fine. I think I've got those. And then yeah, I think I I think this is where. I've used the book, but I'll see if there's anything that strikes some um, inspiration. And of course, you know, flicking through this book is always a <laughs> always a good thing. She's mentioned dog violet again. Oh, lambs! Spring lamb, of course. Lambing season and dog violet. So aside from the birds and butterflies and the lambs, that's the the animals that have come out, isn't it? A lot of birds. Okay. That's fine by me. I love birds. So maybe spring months for me are flowers and birds. And maybe lamb, if I have any pictures of, of little baby lambs. And then we're in June, so that's those. So how long have I been on? Ooh. It's going to be a little bit of a long video, I appreciate, but you know, this might be interesting to some of you. 
I was just moving my cup because I finished my tea now. So to recap then, daisies, daffodils, tulips, butterflies, wild garlic, bees. She didn't have any pictures of bees, but I know we definitely get bees in spring. Late spring at least, anyway. Catkins is in the early months. Birds and nesting birds. And eggs, nests. <laughs> Primrose, cowslip, blossom, hyacinth, lambing season, bluebells, dog violet. Buttercups. I think that's probably enough to be going on with because I've only got six double page spreads. <laughs> um, but I think from that you can get an idea of the colours, can't we? We've definitely got yellows in there. We've got some of the um, uh, brighter colours from, say, the tulips and the dog violet and the hyacinths. So the purples and, and pinks. Um, definitely white and green. And then we've got the birds. A lot of yellow. So that's cool. Okay, so that's answered that question for myself. So the only other thing that I want to do today, I think, <laughs> um, as far as I'm aware, is to have a look through my fabric box for some fabrics that might be nice for the spring months. So the reason I'm doing this now is because from that I can gauge um, what colours I'm looking for. Sorry, I'm just um, looking in the box. Um, it's a big box, otherwise I would put it on the desk. Um, so, I might be able to get something from the pink. Maybe the neutrals. Um, yeah. Now, ideally, I would use a, um, a scrap, but I do have this pillowcase. The vintage pillowcase with this lovely pattern on and this brings the white and the freshness as well as we've got yellow and pink and green in there so if I can't find a scrap piece that is definitely a maybe and I'm gonna have to cut into it one day aren't I right so what have we got in here this is my pink this is how I've got my uh, fabrics organized is I have color coded them because that works for me and I've put them in these clear pouches, much like I've done, I've done the same thing with my laces and ribbons and trims, because then I can actually see much of what I've got in there. Um, so although it's all clumped together and folded up and on top of each other, I can see quite quickly what is actually in here. So for me, that's good. <clears throat> right, I think out of that um, selection, this is what we've got. So I've got this piece of cotton, which has got really pretty colours, especially for spring, hasn't it? We've got butterflies on there, pinks and greens and peach, and then we've got the cream background. Because, yeah, I'm thinking cream rather than white for that, that you know, that neutral. Equally, I've also got these um, laces, lace fabrics. These are really pretty which are see-through but those could maybe go on top of something neutral so this one is a really nice peach like peach and green which is really nice for spring and that's really pretty that one and this one has got the the pinks and the whites and the greens but I think the color of that is a bit too dark maybe more summer I think for what I'm after so I'm keeping those two in mind and then I just want to have a look inside the neutrals uh, just to see if I've got anything that could maybe go behind this lace or something I'm just having a little look what I've got I've got a lot of neutrals <laughs> which, is, which is fine I mean neutrals come in handy all the time don't they I've only really got lace in there I think that would go with it or I've got this doily hmm. so the fabric flip was going to be on top of the vellum pocket wasn't it Now, what I'm thinking is, 
so norm so what I was looking for was a fabric that would completely hide and I'm so sorry about the light it's just getting worse isn't it Let me <laughs> bring that in can you see the fabric at least hopefully so sorry about this um let me just try and need a bigger book <laughs> okay let's let's try that there we go um so what was I saying yeah so my thoughts were the fabric flip was going to be opaque so that it you lift it up and it reveals something but what if it wasn't it wasn't so much to reveal what was behind it but it was to decorate what was behind it so if you imagine this trim on top of vellum now vellum itself isn't decorative really is it I mean it can be but the vellum plain vellum <laughs> that I have in my head isn't decorative this could decorate it in the sense of the vellum is behind that you flip up your your fabric flip in this case this this beautiful trim which could even have you know a beautiful piece of lace or something uh, a ribbon along the top just to finish it off and then you've got your vellum pocket underneath and the vellum is then decor decorated does that make sense that's what I think I'm gonna do so there we go that is another decision made so I think I am feeling pretty good about decisions I've made um, and you know things that we've worked out today so from here my next job is to have a look through my papers to find the colours that I want to go for what I'm leaning towards is a lot of cream and neutral tones <clears throat> and then we're going to have the the fussy cuts and the decoration and the tuck spots and the stuff that we're going to add to the pages that is going to be the colours that I want the yellows, the pinks, the greens, the purples, the blues the, the bird's egg colours, the, the, the you know the, the, the pastel colours that we want and I'm going to go with light browns for birds um, so yeah, so neutral papers with decorative things, decorative papers and tuck spots and things to bring out the colour that I want. I'm happy with that. So this pillowcase lives, <laughs> uh, lives for another day, just popping it back in my box so that I don't um, forget it. Right, so that is me organised for the spring months. Um, I'm so sorry the video is a little bit longer than I had been planning. I thought it would be like a 20 minute video. Um, but I had a lot to, to think about and decide as well. So that is my decisions made. I hope that you've enjoyed um, seeing my process of how I come up with these ideas. Um, so from here, I'm as I say, I need to have a look through my papers, but that will be the next thing that I do now. And then from there, we're in a position when we can finally <laughs> start um, uh, doing the pages together. So <clears throat> I need to have a think about my filming. So I think similar to when I did the winter months, I might do the first page on my own just to get me into the swing of starting this new season. Um, and then from there, we'll just take it a week at a time, like uh, we have been. So that is that. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope at least some of that was able to be followed along slash um, interesting or useful. Maybe you just enjoyed seeing <laughs> Edith Holden. Uh, whatever it is, I hope that you enjoyed um, part of that video, if not all of it. Um, and I hope you enjoy watching the spring pages come together. Once again, I'm so sorry um, for it being late. Um, it's still spring, <laughs> just. Um, but yeah, I know, I have um, I have dragged my feet a lot with this project. Um, what I'm going to be doing is, from the spring months, I'll probably try and have a week's break, and then I'll be just going straight into the summer months, um, to be honest. Because I would really like to get this project finished. And we still have to do the cover. And... I've got this sort of initial like introduction to the book to do and I think I skipped um, 
I still have a winter spread to do somewhere and then we've got the back of it and yeah as I say I need to have a think about what I'm doing for the cover and um, I did find this out um recently this is a <clears throat> I made it as a journal card it's um French book text with napkin decoupaged on and then I've just added a label size wise I think it's the right size because I don't want to lose any of this gold and I wanted to keep the brown because I wanted it to be neutral enough that it um because it's a book for all of the seasons I didn't want to lean towards I kind of want to bring out all of the colors I guess is what I'm thinking um but I don't know I'm not sold on this yet it might be but I'm not sold um I have to have a think but yeah I might I, I'm keeping it with it because I might have this as the cover I'm just not 100% yet anyway I will leave it there I've chatted on long enough um so stay tuned for the videos of us actually doing the pages together and I'll speak to you soon bye for now thanks so much for joining me and keeping me company speak soon then